A happy new year to everyone. Welcome to the first service in 2021. We trust that you've had an enjoyable Christmas and New Year period, that perhaps some of you have been able to meet with your families, and I know many of you have been unable to do that this year again, so we're, we're sorry to hear about that. But we hope you've had a good Christmas, you've enjoyed some of your presents and some of the food, and just made the most of it. But we're here today to worship and to praise God. God's big plan revealed. We did that story last week. This is a different way of telling it. What was wrong with last week's way of telling it? We had a priest and a prophetess, two pregnant women singing, angels and shepherds and baby boys, and a very busy Holy Spirit. It was a great story, very Christmassy. This is another way of telling the same story. This one goes back to the beginning of time, before we ever saw or knew Mary's son. He was dancing with the spirit and the mystery that is God. That's very poetic. It gets even better. Remember Elizabeth's son? Yes, when he grew up, his job was to get people ready for God. The light of the world is coming, he said. The light and life of God is going to be seen in a person just like us. The glory of God embodied and real living among us. Mary's son, the one everyone was getting ready for. Yes, Jesus, existing since time began, entering into human history, meeting us in the flesh, in the room. Let there be light. I see it. God's big plan revealed. Same story, told in another way. First as a baby, now as a man, all the grace of God, all the truth of God for us to recognise and receive, befriending us, inviting us to belong.
let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, help us to turn our dreams into realities, our resolutions to solutions, our hope to action. Help us to repent of our mistakes, to be truly sorry for our broken promises, to forgive the lies we have told and the hurts, deliberate or otherwise, that we have inflicted upon others. Forgive us for being complicit with injustice when we have remained silent or done nothing or stood by and watched, turn the other cheek that broke hearts that were not ours. Forgive us for being reckless and mean and stingy. Forgive us for hardness of heart and wearing rose-coloured spectacles to suit our point of view. Living God, all of these habits are difficult to break that have formed within us so that we do not even begin to understand our deceit and treachery. So have mercy upon us. Renew and restore us. Forgive our sins and break our habits so that we may be your disciples today and every day as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. When all things began, the Word already was. The Word dwelt with God. And what God was, the Word was. The Word then was with God at the beginning. And through Him all things came to be. No single thing was created without him. All that came to be was alive with his life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines on in the dark. And the darkness has never mastered it. There appeared a man named John. Sent from God. He was a witness to testify to the light that all might become believers through him. He was not himself the light. He came to bear witness to the light, the real light which enlightens every man was even then coming to the world. He was in the world, but the world though it owed its being to him did not recognize him. He entered his own realm and his own would not receive him. But to all who did receive him, to those who have yielded their allegiance, he gave the right to become children of God, not born of any human stock or by the fleshly desire of a human father, but the offspring of God himself. So the word became flesh. He came to dwell among us and we saw his glory. Such glory as besit, befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Here is John's testimony to him. He cried aloud. This is the man I meant when I said, he comes after me but takes rank before me. For before I was born, he already was. Out of his full score, we have all received grace upon grace. For while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God's only Son, 
he is the nearest to the Father's heart, he has made him known. Amen, and may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Almost 70 years ago, Eli Weisel was a 15-year-old prisoner in a Nazi death camp at Buna. A cache of arms belonging to a Dutchman had been discovered at the camp. The man was promptly shipped to Auschwitz. But he had a young servant boy, a pipple, as they were called, a child with a beautiful and refined face, unheard of in the camps. He had the face of a sad angel. The little servant, like his Dutch master, was cruelly tortured, but would not reveal any information. So the SS sentenced the child to death, along with two other prisoners who had been discovered with arms. Eli Weisel tells the story. One day, when we came back from work, we saw three gallows rearing up in the assembly place. Three black crows. Roll call. SS all around us. Machine gun trained. The traditional ceremony. 
three victims in chain. I'm one of them. The little servant, the sad-eyed angel. The SS seemed more preoccupied, more disturbed than usual. To hang a young boy in front of thousands of spectators was no light matter. The head of the camp read the verdict. All eyes were on the child. He was lividly pale, almost calm, biting his lips. The gallows threw its shadow over him. This time the Laga Capo refused to act as executioner. So three SS men replaced him. The three victims mounted together onto the chairs. The three necks were placed at the same moment within the nooses. Long live liberty, cried the two adults. But the child was silent. Where is God? Where is he? Someone behind me asked. Total silence throughout the camp. On the horizon the sun was setting. Bear your heads! yelled the head of the camp. His voice was raucous. We were weeping. Cover your heads! Then the march pass began. The two adults were no longer alive. Their tongues hung swollen, blue-tinged. But the third rope was still moving. Being so light, the child was still alive. For more than half an hour he stayed there, struggling between life and death, dying in slow agony under our eyes. And we had to look him full in the face. He was still alive when I passed in front of him. His tongue was still red. His eyes were not yet glazed. And behind me, I heard the same man asking, Where is God now? And I heard a voice within me answer him, Where is he? Here he is. He's hanging here on this gallows. But I wonder, where do you see God? In the paintings and museums? Or in the architecture of a great cathedral? Do you find God in the rising of the sun or in the going down of the same? Do you find God in the beauty of his creation or in the loving actions of his followers? If God is only found in the beauty and the nice things of the world, what kind of God is that we worship? But our God, the God of Eli Wiesel and the God of many is to be found in detention centres and in prisons and in refugee camps. God is found in the worst of our housing schemes, in our nursing homes and hospitals. Our God is out there in the midst of war zones and is there during times of flood or drought or fire. God is to be found wherever we might be. God is to be found in our messes, in our places of pain. God is to be found sharing our suffering and our illnesses. God is carrying those burdens that we cannot handle and is able to bear the loads that are too much for us. Our God is no icon, nor statue, nor sentimental effigy. But our God is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh and dwells in the midst of our everyday life from the beginning of time to the end of time. God is with us. 
And so as we start a new year, may God join you wherever you are. Let's just pause for a moment and imagine that this God is walking down your street. He stops for a chat with you. I wonder, what would you like to say to God or to ask of God today? Let's listen to some music as we ponder that place. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. He was in the world, this world, our world, now world. And the words on the streets is love, grace and glory. Write that word across the walls of graffiti. Speak that word on the too busy for other street corners. Paint that word across hate banners and small mindedness. Live that word in the heart of prejudice and fear. The word on the streets is the word is alive among us, between us, and within us. He is in the world, this world, our world, now world. Amen. Sharing God's Christmas light, shine.
presents we make Christmas real. Trusting in God's goodness, believing you are loved, and may the threefold go, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Oh.